So here's what the kind of structure that we would expect the Milky Way to have. Okay, you see here? If you take a look from face value, we see the spiral structures. We see the spiral arms, Carina, Orion, Perseus. And one of the things we're going to see later on is that the sun is, you see, if this is the Orion spiral arm, it's either inside of it or at least close to it. These are the spiral arms. So our galaxy is called a spiral galaxy. It has a spiral arm uh, structure. Now, if you look at it from the side, that means you take this guy, face value, and then you turn it and you view it this way, you see, from the side. You see that it's very thin. It looks like this. Then you got the center. You see? So the length of the disk, so from one side to the other, it's about 75,000 to 100,000 light years. OK? The thickness of the disk is this guy, from this guy to this guy. So from one end to the other end, that would be about 2,000 light years. So its thickness, like your hand's thickness, this one, its thickness compared to its length is very short. You know, It's much longer than its thickness. The other thing we notice is that there's a bunch of stars here. There's a bunch of stars here. And then there's a gap in the middle, right? Same thing here. There's a bunch of stars here. There's a bunch of stars here. There's a gap in the middle. We've noticed these kinds of gaps before. The asteroid belt had gaps in it. Uh, Saturn's rings had gaps in it called the Cassini division, right? So it seems to be common. Then there's a gap there. That gap is just full of dust. Not many stars are there, OK? Just dust. So we call it. The dust gap, 400 light years, uh, around 400 light years in thickness. Distance of the sun from the center, from the sun. So the sun is here, okay? So it's going to be 30,000 light years. And then you've got the globular clusters that are over here, you know? So the globular clusters are going around the center. The Milky Way contains six portions to it, six big parts. The halo, okay, the halo in this picture would be in all the stars that are surrounding it, like this. They were the original stars when the galaxy began, but they did not collapse with the rest of the Milky Way. They stayed there, okay? So I have another picture that shows you the halo. This is a different view. This is a good one, too, a good view. So you got the Milky Way. This one is an artistic picture, you see? It's not a real picture. Because someone has to come out and then take a picture of the whole thing. So it's our conception from what are we are observing. It's our conception of what it should look like. You see, you got the Milky Way, you got this, you got that, you got, the, you got the, this one, then you got the bottom one. Then you got the globular clusters. Then you got the halo. The halo almost reminds me of uh, the Oort cloud, if you remember. So imagine the sun is here. The sun. If you kind of think about it, the Milky Way is a bigger version of the solar system, right? You got the sun, and then you got the Earth 
going around the sun, and then you got other planets going around the sun, right? And then you got the Oort cloud surrounding surrounding the solar system. All this action is taking place right over there. You see? Well, now this one is just a bigger version of that. You got the uh, you got the, the stars going around the center of the uh, galaxy, you see? You got the halo stars, they're coming in like this. And then you got the globular clusters. The globular clusters kind of play the role of the asteroids or comets here. You see the comets come in like that? Like that? So it's amazing that if you simply blow this up, it behaves as the Milky Way. It's a bigger version, you know. So you got the halo surrounds the Milky Way. It contains all stars which make elliptical paths around the galactic plane. So they come in like this, and they come out, you see. This is another picture of it. See there, a the central bulge. Then you got the halo. Surrounding the halo, we have a region of dark matter, OK? We have dark matter halo. And we haven't quite understood the nature of dark matter, you know, what it is and what it does. But we, we know the effects, why, uh, what it does. We know what it causes, but we don't know what it is, actually. What is the dark matter? Corona surrounds the halo. It contains dark matter, so that's the one that I just showed you, all the material surrounding the halo. Globular clusters surround the disk, so those would be these ones, okay? They contain all stars, and they also make elliptical pads around the galactic plane. GP means the galactic plane. The galactic plane kind of plays the role of the ecliptic plane. You see, this one we called it the ecliptic plane. Ecliptic plane, and then this one here, we're calling it the galactic plane. See, ecliptic plane, galactic planes, plays the same role. Same here, see here, the sun. See how the globular clusters, they're distributed around the center. And now we know we're not at the center because we're off to the side. And the globular clusters are centered around that point. It was uh, Harlow Shapley, he figured this out. When he did the, when he did the uh, estimate of their positions, we call it the Shapley plot of the location of globular clusters. And we owe to him our understanding of the Milky Way. The disk is inside of the galactic plane. It contains young stars which makes circular paths around the nucleus. So you see this disk here, this disk? It goes, the stars inside of the disk go around. The funny thing is their paths are more circular. So our sun also does the same thing. Our sun doesn't just stand there. It goes around the center of the nucleus. And the path that it does is more circular than elliptical. Again, very similar to what the planets are doing. The planets are going around the sun in mainly circular orbits, and then comets are going around the sun in mainly elliptical orbits, you see? So if we draw the, see? For example, our sun would be doing this, you see? This way. You see that? And their orbit are, is closer to a circle than an ellipse. but the Stars of the halo and the, gl the globular clusters, they're coming in more like an ellipse. So their orbits look more like a comet, whereas the sun's orbit looks more like a planet, you see? <coughs> How many years does it take the sun to go around the center once? It takes 200 million years, OK? The sun takes 200 million years to go around once. You know the old debate between Copernicus and uh, Tycho Brahe and whether the sun is the center of the solar system or whether the earth is the center. Copernicus won that debate, right? He said the sun is the center. But even he was 
ultimately wrong because he thought that the sun is the center of the universe, right? So we now know, no, center, the sun is not the center. The sun is actually going around the center of the Milky Way. And it takes 200 million years to do that, okay? And then over time, the positions of the constellations will change. The RA and deck angle of constellations will change as a result of the fact that the sun is going around and it's not stationary, you know? So it, the sun has no special place in the Milky Way. And the Milky Way has no special place in the universe, <laughs> you know? No particular special spot. Okay, the spiral arms, which is, which is what I showed you earlier, they're the ones that are coming off, extend outward from the disk and are inside of the galactic plane. GP, again, is galactic plane. They contain young stars, which make circular paths around the nucleus. The Milky Way has five spiral arms, okay, named, and then the order of how I named these from the innermost one, the spiral arm closest to the center is called Norma. Then the second one farther away from the center, Scudum Crux. Third one is Sagittarius Carina. Fourth one, Orion. And then the fifth one, Perseus. So those are outward from the center. Norma, Scudum, Sag, Carina, Orion, and Perseus. The sun is near or inside of the Orion spiral arm. So it's either inside of that arm or slightly out. Okay, this is another picture of that, you see? Norma, Scudum Crux, Sagittarius Carina, then uh, there should be Orion right here, Perseus Cygnus, okay, and then you've got the Solar system is right there. Well, that answers your question, you see. The sun is right there. <laughs> and then the solar system is right there going around. So we're nowhere even close to that center. The nuclear bulge is at the center of the Milky Way. It contains very dense grouping of stars and also a black hole named supermassive black hole, okay? We'll return to this topic of the nucleus uh, in a few minutes too. So one of the things we've done is when we've studied the center of the Milky Way, uh, 5,000 light years from the center, 10,000 light years from the center, 16,000 light years, and then the sun is 30,000 light years from the center. And then when we look at the center, we see lots of activity happening. And then when we blow that up, Okay, we say smaller gas ring, bar-shaped aggregate of stars, part of expanding ring of molecule-rich gas. When we blow it up even more, gas falling into the core, ring of dust and gas. And then we notice that there's a powerful radio source here emitting lots of energy. Powerful radio source called Sagittarius A, perhaps associated with a massive black hole. Okay, so there's a lot of research being done behind that is finding the nature of the centers of galaxies. What's causing this powerful radio and X-ray source? What's causing this high emission? And what we notice is that a lot of galaxies uh, have this behavior. A lot of very powerful energy is being emitted, and we believe it's associated with a supermassive black hole that's gulping out everything around it and emitting lots and lots of energy. <laughs> 